The Small Business Show, episode 170 for Wednesday, May 9th, 2018. Folks, and welcome to the Small Business Show here at businessshow.co. By, for, and about, you guessed it, small business owners. Sponsors for this episode include the folks at Smile Software, where at textexpander.com slash podcast, you get 20% off your first year. We'll talk more about that later in the episode. For now, here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. And in Lafayette, California, I'm Shannon Jean. How are you, Dave Hamilton? I am. Uh, I am Dave Hamilton. That's uh, that's how it goes. <laughs> that's good. We got that far. Yeah, that's good. You know that yeah. some days that's all you get. So you take it and you run <laughs> with it. Uh, yep. And some days is, it's not enough. True. That is true. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, you know, we were called out by not uh, not. Well, we were called out, but then we we decided to be a little more transparent about some of the stumbles that that we have made, and. Um, and so I, I just want to start the episode right there with with a whine uh, about something. It, it actually turns out that it ended well. But when I put this on our list, I was really frustrated. So, uh, you know, we take credit card payments and we talked about how we moved away from authorized net and uh, and, you know, the service that was working with that because they were charging us a fortune in fees and all that stuff. And we moved to Stripe. But um I looked the other day now, and this is the worst part about this, but it's, it's my wife who does our accounting for us and, and she does a stellar job. Um, but I happened to look in there the other day and, uh, I opened up the reconcile window because I was testing something else. And I saw that there were two transactions from the end of 2016, that were listed as unreconciled to deposits. And I'm like, what the heck is this? Like, that's like, we, we're logging that we have this money in the bank and uh, does, does the <laughs> bank disagree? I, I laugh. Yeah. yeah you've yeah. been there. I've yes, done yes, this yes. too. Right. I mean, I it, it, yeah. Yeah. And it was like, and, and to be fair, like, I have overlooked this in the past too. I, I don't look at this, you know, she, she does the reconciliation and keeps everything really clean and, and all of that stuff. But I have seen this in the past. This is not the first time I saw it, but I finally was like, okay, wait a minute. Like th this has gone on. Like usually that stuff, you know, you have some things from previous months that, that catch up or whatever. And it's, it's not a big deal. You know, somebody doesn't cash a check or whatever. Right. And so I just sort of ignored it, but it's like, wait a minute, this isn't somebody didn't cash a check. This is money that, we say is in the account, but it's not in the, like, like the bank hasn't told us it's in the account. Like it didn't show up. So I started digging and we, we both started digging. It was like, what is this? And we looked and we found why we booked it. It was people that had paid not via a credit card, but via e-check using that same service. Oh. So how, how that even happened, I don't know. I think we probably gave them the link to pay with their credit card. They probably said, we don't want to give you our credit card number, so we'll just give us the link, we'll pay. And for whatever reason, you know, they found themselves to navigate to a way where they could pay with an e-check, which, okay, fine. I mean, it's basically the same fees on our end. Like, we don't care. And so we got the right. confirmation that the e-check was processed, but then, like, the money never came. And, of course... You know, we severed ties in no uncertain terms with these people several months ago with not not the client, but with the the processor that we used with AuthorizeNet. I was like, oh, crap. You know, and it was it was, a you know, a couple of grand. Right. I mean, it you know, oh, yeah. like, yeah, significant, significant. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And it was like, crap, I want that money. You know, like I thought I had that money is really what it is. So I definitely want that yes. money. You know, sure. I don't even get to like, it's not a win when it shows up. It's like, we're back to even, but uh, it was like, crap. I mean, it's two years old. What's going to happen with this? So we dug and dug and dug and realized like, we're not showing this money ever having shown up. Like if, if it did, we like our, our not reconciling it was correct. And so I was like, so I told Lisa, I'm like, all right, we call authorized net, see what happens. She's like, yeah, I'm on it. I, you know, she, I, she hates those people because they, they stole right, money. Right. They stole money from us every week or every month for years. So in her yes. mind, then and, and they sort of did because they charged way more than they should. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, uh, but we let them. So it's, that's not really stealing. 
Um, but anyway, she's like, great. And she called them up. And you know what? They were like, what are you talking about? And the guy said, all right, let me, let me research it. And came back on the phone, you know, five minutes later. And the, she said his tone completely changed. It was like, evidently we do have no. some money from you. Yeah. What? Yeah. Oh, no It was like, way. it shouldn't have been this easy, right? <laughs> that's insane. And, yeah, that's and, great. And she was like, he's like, yeah, it's on an accounting hold. He says, but I don't know why. And he wouldn't confirm the number. Right. So, oh, but, but it such was, a corporate, but, but yeah, he would yeah. confirm that, it, that those two transactions were part of this e-check thing. Like I, I, you know, it was just, he probably couldn't see what accounting could see. So he didn't want to say, I know it's that number. Cause maybe it was more, or maybe they had paid one of them right. or, you know, whatever. Okay. Yeah. So he was, yeah, you I know, see. working within his, his purview and, uh, and he was like, yeah. So she called him back a couple days later. And he said, yeah, you know, I'm going to like, he's what, apologetic about holding our money. I mean, like they saw it in the same light that we did. Like they shouldn't have been holding on to this for, all, you know, a year and a half or whatever. And, yeah. um, and they said, we're going to put a rush on it. And that sure enough, this morning, the money showed up in our checking account. You know, oh, that's good. And end yep. to that story, you know, yep. well, uh, there, there's one it, it, more it's a tough one. There's one more like shoe that's going to drop because I told I, I said to Lisa, I said, well, you know, we had two accounts of them, one for each of the two of the companies. I said, ask them if they have any like found money for us on this other one. And she did. And the guy said the same thing. Yes, I, I show that there wow. is, is money on an accounting hold there. And like that money, we don't like, we don't know exists, right? At least this stuff yeah. we knew existed. So we sure. need to call, but she just asked and, and the guy's like, yeah, um, I'm processing that too, but it's going to be a day behind. So tomorrow morning, the other shoe drops and we see, you know, what found money shows up there. So, which I don't think is going to be very you much, know, but there you go. Yeah. But still your money uh, doesn't yeah. matter how much it is. It's yeah. still your money. Yeah. Uh, and you know, there's a, I've done, I severed a business relationship with a group of people because they had the a mentality of, uh, oh, like example, refunds, let's say customer mm -hmm. refunds and their mentality. And these folks were running the accounting for this particular business venture that I was involved in many years ago. And their mentality is we don't issue the refunds until the customer calls us. Oh. And I'm like, I said, you guys are crazy, <laughs> you know, and I didn't know, I didn't know about it until I kind of stumbled onto, I mean, you know, similar, why does all this, you know, run in the books and I see yeah. this, this refund account getting bigger and bigger and bigger. I said, what's going on with this here? And, uh, finally I said, no, no, we don't, we don't issue those until we get a phone call or an email. And I said, well, that's not, I don't think that's right. I'm not even sure that's legal. And, uh, they were adamant about it. And I was a very minor, you know, uh, yep. partner. And I said, Oh guys, I don't want to be involved in this anymore. Let's figure something out. Yep. And we, 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 we did that. But, uh, I think that might be more common than you think. You know, I have uh, no the, doubt the, that it is. Yeah. 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 Like, Oh yeah. You know, and I mean, yeah. it's one of those things like, okay, sure. You didn't like, I think, I, I truly don't know like where the problem was, but it sounds like it might've been, we never f finished filling out like the, the form about e-check to, to like fully enable it or something like they knew how to send us money because they were, they were doing it for credit cards like daily. Right. But, but there was some procedural red tape thing that we didn't fill out because we didn't want to use this. And, uh, that, but you know, stuck for what, there. yeah, it was just stuck there. Yeah. But still, yeah. like, especially when we closed the account out, yeah, they should have said, well, have what, you know, like, because we told they them, like, reconciled. We, <laughs> we owe you some money, you owe us some money, yeah. like, we let's sort it out. They should have, like, somebody should have said, oh, hey, you know, uh, there's actually quite a bit of money we owe you, <laughs> you know, it's not, it's yeah. not just yesterday's oh, sales wow. or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I, so I, I felt it's very crazy. good about our decision to sever our relationship with them, our, our previous decision to sever that relationship. But I am happy that they didn't make it difficult to, for us to do the right thing. Like, I don't know what. Yeah, what, that's great. What we would have done. Yeah. I mean, it. yeah, it's crazy. Well, they could have said, we can't talk to you. Your account's closed. You know, yeah. that would have been a nightmare. Oh, and you wouldn't yeah. be able to find yeah, out then, what's what going we, on. Then, then we look um, at, you know, it's a few thousand dollars or whatever. But is it right. worth filing, you know, a suit or like, no, no, yeah. <laughs> probably not. Sure. You know? Yeah. Sure. 
So when it kind of comes down to what, you know, I talk about it here on the show all the time. Accounting is, you know, not my favorite thing to deal with. And we talk about, uh, sometimes cutting corners and, and maybe not reconciling things as often as, as we should and looking at those numbers and filling your time up with other things. We talked about that in, you know, last week's episode. Yeah. Uh, and, and I would say that, you know, one of the areas you just want to do everything that you can not to cut those corners, you know, is your accounting stuff. You, yeah. you know, even if you're not the person then get somebody that can help you. And, you know, remember we had, um, uh, man, I'm trying to remember the guest that we had on, um, Brian O'Connell. Uh, and I don't remember the name of this company at this time, but he talked about, uh, hiring a CFO, uh, at some point in yes. the, the executive group that he was a member of the, you know, he would go to get advised. They told him not to come back unless he hired one. And that forced him to hire the CFO who he thought, you know, couldn't handle, he couldn't afford this, that, and the other thing. And, you know, yep. that was the best, he could say it was the best decision. Oh, he said his uh, business that, grew that leaps did. and bounds. Yep. Yeah. Yep. It's because true. Because you're, you're got somebody keeping an eye on, you know, who owes that money and you may be the best salesperson in the world, but, uh, you know, keeping track of every bit of that dollar that you earn, you, you need somebody that, that really can do that. Yep. Uh, and I've, I've always tried to partner with people that were um, much better at that than I am. Yeah. So. Well, yeah. Filling the gaps. That's right. Hey, um, yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I don't know how much of this conversation you and I have even had, but, but we might as well do it in public. I cut some corners recently, Shannon, when I, when I opened our bank account and, and so I, I wanted to tell that story as an example of when that, like you have to cut some corners sometimes like shortcuts is really yeah. kind of the thing. Shortcuts. That's yeah. right. So That's I right. want to tell that story, but, but I know how we are. So before we do that, I want to talk about our sponsors Does that work for you. Yeah, I think it's great because it's one of my favorite products of all time. So <laughs> there you go. Go for it. Cool. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> yep. Our sponsor today is Smile Software with Text Expander. Now, Text Expander is one, I call them Smile Software. I, they used to be Smile Software. My apologies. They are now Smile uh, at smilesoftware.com. Except you're going to visit textexpander.com slash podcast to get 20% off of truly one of my favorite utilities. In the last episode, we talked about golden phrases, right? And I said, you know, leading by poor example, I was going to head the company down a path that actually we've started to head down now of sort of dissecting this, this one sale that I did and mining it for opportunities for golden phrases. And, and we've actually come up with some that, that other people use. I didn't use them because I did it wrong, but it, it sort of pulls out of the woodwork some of these things. And, and now we can codify them and you can take your golden phrases and put them in to text expander. And then you assign them a snippet so that when you're like, for example, for us, when we're trying to uh, explain to someone why it makes more sense to start with, you know, to treat a trial not as one episode, but multiple episodes, then, uh, you know, we have a snippet of text that really is a good core phrase for uh, explaining that. So we now all have it in our text expander libraries because we can sync them because we're a, core, a company and you can do that with your text expander subscription. And now we all That's have huge. it. And, and right, we don't need to rethink it. I can take it and tweak the language so that it matches the tone of the email I'm sending or Jeff can tweak the language. Like it, no problem, but we're starting from the same core and I, it's huge. It's going to make a huge difference. It would have, I think it would have changed things dramatically for me um, uh, on this one sale. And and really, it doesn't take too many instances of success to justify having a piece of software like this. The good news is we already had it, so we didn't even need that. But uh, it, the text expander is awesome. Uh, really something that, uh, that I couldn't live without both personally and business wise, my, my, any computer I work with, if it doesn't have it on it, I, I, like I say, I feel like I'm typing with mittens on cause all my shortcuts don't work. So there you go. Yeah. That's, yep. Yeah. It's great. It's a life changer and, and you will not regret it. Uh, it will help automate and, uh, set some systems in place that will really help you, uh, you know, achieve success. Yeah, for sure. So our thanks to Definitely. smile at uh, text expander.com slash podcast for sponsoring this episode. 
All right. So cool. Now let's talk about cutting corners. I love I love hearing these stories because I'm I'm a natural rule breaker, and uh, I, you know I think it's a great thing. So tell us what you did, man. Yeah, and so I know that about you, and I know that our tolerance for that type of risk is maybe the right word, maybe the wrong word. I don't know, but it's certainly our our tolerance for how much of the rules to break is is very similar. So in the moment, I had to make a decision. I went to the bank. Um, I, we closed out our checking account. So Shannon and I have had a corporate entity together for uh, a long time, over uh, almost a decade and a half, maybe more than that. 16 years, I think uh, something, I think, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Cause we started anyway. deals on the web and, and so we have that entity and that's what we're using for small business show here. But we had closed the bank account because we were sick and tired of paying the monthly fee for something that uh, for a number of years was simply doing nothing other than costing us monthly fees. Uh, so we closed that account. And then of course we started bringing on advertisers for the podcast here. And we now need a place to, you know, funnel the money through. And so we can do it the right way. And I found a free checking account at uh, a local or regional bank here and I'll keep their name out of it so that, uh, um, because I don't necessarily need them to know what we just did. Um, and, uh, and so I went down there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we're we're going to fix this, by the way. Certainly I'm, they're listening to this yeah, right now. I'm I, sure they are. So <laughs> sure, happy. Yes. I'm going to get a phone call. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. Uh, yeah, there you go. Perhaps by the time this episode's out, you folks will have had the problem yeah. fixed. That's right. Let's assume that. There we go. There so we go. anyway, I went down there. And, uh, you know, I said, I want to open actually two business checking accounts, one for this and then one for the, the new business that uh, I'm not really talking about. And uh, and the woman was like, great. And she said, I had called in advance and I said, what do I need to bring? And they said, you need to bring your tax ID number. OK, great. You need to bring your articles of incorporation. Great. And you need to bring a photo ID. Awesome. No problem. Like, great. So I show up and I have these three things for each company. Good to go. And uh, as we're going through it, she said, well, we're going to need a copy of your operating agreement. I'm like, OK, well, that's cool. Uh, and then she says, and we're also going to while. Need, yeah, we're also going to need a resolution <laughs> signed by the powers that be at your company that, uh, you know, indicates that you as a company have resolved to open a checking account with our bank. It's like, okay. Uh, okay. Now I am no attorney in my head. I'm perhaps incorrectly, uh, taking the liberty of convenience to think that, uh, or inconvenience to think that it would almost certainly need to be Shannon and me signing this resolution, signing right. this, uh, the, you know, to, to this thing. But the woman at the bank kept saying things like, uh, you're going to need your operating agreement. But if you don't have one, we have a boilerplate one here that, you know, you can just sign I'm like, OK. And then she said, and for a resolution, if you don't have them with you, we have a boilerplate one here that you can just sign. And I said, <laughs> OK, you know, I, like great. I didn't necessarily offer any in if she had asked me, is there anyone, you, you know, it, like, are you the sole signer of of your of the company? I would have had to answer truthfully. Right. And no. Right. 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 But she never did. And so I. I'm assuming we cut some corners here, but who knows? I'm not an attorney. So, uh, so anyway, she pulled out the operating agreement, the thing, and I've signed it, knowing full well that I can't bind Shannon to an operating agreement that he's not seeing nor signing. Uh, right. And uh, the same with the resolution. And, uh, and then she started asking these, she said something about, well, if there's an individual, I guess there's a new thing, man. Like for nine, ever since 9-11, maybe related to the Patriot yeah. Act, where if there's yeah. a person, an individual that owns more than 25 percent of the shares, then they need all kinds of information. It's not difficult information, but it's like this whole other form. And 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 really, you know, with all of these things that she was asking for, I sort of did the math in my head and I thought, OK, so I have a choice to make here. I can stop the presses. And tell her, OK, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, we can't do this stuff today. Like, there's there's this is not how this is going to work. I would need, you know, at least one other person here with me, potentially several yeah. other people uh, to in order to fill out these forms on the spot. And so that can't happen. So 
I thought, well, I have two choices. One, or I have one choice. I have two options. One is that I uh, can see how far her momentum will get us and then come back two weeks later and fix it with all the right forms. Or I can tell her, let's stop the presses. I'll come back in two weeks uh, with the right forms and we can start this process anew. I chose plan A and it seems to have worked. Good, uh, good choice. Uh, yeah, it was yeah, like it's either right way in two weeks or three weeks, whatever it's going to be. The things are going to be right with the bank. And and really where it matters yeah. is if something happens to me, you need to be able to like show up at the bank and and let them, you know, have them let you get the money. Right. You know, well, and but I also would say that I have two, two comments on this sure. one, probably something you would not do with a brand new business relationship that you don't know the people that great, or mm. if it's, you've never done business with them before. But since we have this history of, you know, and you just fired me off a quick Slack message and I'm like, of course, set it up. Yep. It, so that's one thing. Uh, it's a, it's in the right context. But the other thing is in the, you know, now with, you know, or for the last decade with everything online, uh, you know, and as long as you have and get online access, you can sweep those funds out out in an instant. Yep. Uh, and so, uh, you know, a lot of this stuff isn't, I mean, sure, legally we, we need to get both on there and all that kind of stuff. It's important, but not enough to stop, um, you know, the, the process. And right. that's what can be frustrating and that, if that, you don't have your, all that stuff. Yeah. And that's sort of my MO. And like I said, I know it, I, I know it's yours that like, just get it done and, Get you know, to use an, the audio term, we'll fix it in post, right? We'll just, we'll clean it up yeah. later. It's going to be sure. fine. I, I'm not, I, I'm in spirit. I wasn't doing anything that would violate something that you or I would, uh, like, I wasn't creating a bank account that you were totally against. I mean, we were actually all for this. Yeah. It was just like, okay, there's this procedure that... Whoa, this is difficult. So let's just get it done. And so then, you know, of course, I got the accounts opened. And then the two days later, you know, the woman calls me and says, a compliance has some real questions about the, this whole thing. <laughs> I'm thinking, yeah, no compliance. kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Just that word right there. Yeah. Oh and, my all gosh. It, and I'm thinking, <laughs> oh, here we go. Like, how am I going to weasel my way out of this, you know, without looking like a total heel? And uh, and she said, oh, no. she led you down the primrose path, man. Yes, she, she gave, told you everything to say. <laughs> yeah, she told me what to say. So I said it. That's exactly yeah, right. But yeah, I, but really, yeah. the only problem they had and it was for both businesses. They're like, we we have everything, but we don't have any paperwork that relates me to the business. Y you know, there's ah, like there's yeah. nothing. She's like, the operating agreement doesn't really count because you sign that right here. Like, yeah, gotcha. the right, correct. Right, right. <laughs> now we're on the same page. Yeah, it's BS. But so I, I had some paperwork or whatever that, you know, tied my name to each business because we've gotten mail for them and other things, you know, other right. things or whatever. So I sent those off and she's like, oh, yeah, compliance is happy. Now, it's possible that in the next day or two we might hear otherwise. <laughs> but I, I, but in the, I think but in the meantime, okay. you yeah, in the meantime, you've opened the bank account. We start pushing, you know, funds in there. And, yes. and so you're getting the job done. You're moving forward. Right. Uh, and, and I would, I always would suggest that, you know, you do whatever you need to do to move forward, uh, making sure everything's legal, of course, but uh, waiting around to ask permission, I, I think is, is the worst thing to do um, when it comes to your small business. Just take some action and you can always clean it up later. And, uh, you know, especially for small things like this, we're talking about, we're not talking about you went and, you know, rented a building or whatever and didn't talk to your partners or this <laughs> kind of stuff. No, yeah. no. don't just, worry. It's only a 15 things. year lease, man. It's fine. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. But, but what you find is small things can just clog up the gears of your business and you, someone uh, and you, and hopefully the people that you've in, Powered that work for you um, can take those actions. And, and I, I use this phrase a lot. I would, I say, look, I always want you to make a decision, but I reserve the right to critique that decision. Uh, I, I'm never going to go and say you, you blew it. You made the wrong decision, but I'd say, look, maybe I would have done it this way. Right. And, and trying to empower 
uh, those people because I, I don't want them to come ask me. I, they, if they're in the position that they're in, and I'm confident enough that you know they've hopefully risen up in your organization and are doing something right, they should be able to make those decisions. Or you got the wrong person in there. Yeah, you know. Um, so it, it, it's a good story. I like that. I like that. Cool. Well, I'm glad um, you like yeah. it because it's it's actually true. So you know, <laughs> and it's done. Yeah. And, it's and it's done, done. right? Yeah. And and right. It, you know, even before we get all the right paperwork in place, you already have online access to the account. That's right. right. So you That's can, the most, most important thing to me. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Which I knew exactly. it, it was because we had had that conversation. It was like, okay, cool. So as soon as I can get the you know the ATM card and the PIN number, which I had to wait for right. in the mail because right. of the red tape process. But that once that showed up, it was like within hours you had the access just like I did and we're good to go. So, yep. Yeah, it's perfect. Yep. The problem is like, I don't want, like sometimes you cut the corner at the start and, and then, you know, you realize as time goes by, you're like, you know, I don't need to go back and fix that. Like things are totally Uh, fine. Yes. With this one. Yes. I'm, I don't, I don't know that that's really necessarily the best decision. Um, And, in the no, process, you need to clean it up. I think yeah. we need to clean it up. But also, I realized we still have um, the Mac Observer on our on our deals on the web company because oh. Mac Observer was, yeah, was a, a, a stakeholder in, right. in that site. But since that doesn't exist, yep. we need to remove Mac Observer from that. And uh, correct. And and I already talked with the f- folks at Mac Observer just to make sure that, you know, nobody felt like they had any, you know, any ownership to something that I didn't think we had ownership to. And th- there's no right. problem there. It's like it's not going to be an issue, but we should clean that part up, too. And so this this is sort of a nice time that it's like, oh, yeah, now that we're looking at this, huh, this is all kind of wrong anyway. So we might as well just clean it up and, and fix it. So no, that's great. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, hey, crazy. before we skip out today, yeah, yeah one thing I do want to talk about is I want to talk about the small business support group uh, and try to get some feedback from the members. You know, we have about four hundred, maybe you know, maybe four fifty or uh, you know, members, typically small business owners or uh, folks that are in, interested in small business, and we, our our uh, number of people joining the group is is growing quickly, and uh, I. I want to get some guidance or some feedback from the people that are using the group on what is an acceptable post, because I've been deleting some lately that uh, a, perhaps a new uh, member would sign up, which could be maybe kind of a spammy post where you're trying to recruit business or generate business for their company or something like that. And I don't know, maybe people don't mind seeing those things. And so if you're listening and you're number one, if you're not a member of the small business support group, go to businessshow.co slash Facebook and sign up because it's a great place. There's some great, really, really smart people uh, in the group that will answer your questions about your business or, you know, and, and we want to hear from you. So then secondly, uh, we'll post in the, in the group and ask some, ask these questions. We'll Same take a poll. Question. Yeah. To right. See yeah. yeah. To see, who, you know, what do you want to see in here? Does he just want it back and forth feedback and have it non-commercialized or do you care, uh, if, if occasionally, uh, a business, a member of the group uh, pitches their services, uh, to the group at large? Cause I have my thoughts on it, but I felt that, uh, we want to hear your feedback as well. Yeah. Yeah. Let us know what you think and then we'll kind of mix it all together. We'll make a decision and, and, uh, and we will institute policy. And, and while we're at it, we go. um, and we'll ask this in the group too. Actually, maybe we won't ask this in the group. Sometimes people will, will rise up, um, it, rise to the challenge. I should say is it, it, we may want to enlist some of you who are interested to yeah. help us moderate the group. So if you are listening here and you're interested, shoot us a note, feedback at businessshow.co that, uh, that you want to, or, or shoot us notes on Facebook or something, but I want it to be people that listen to the show that, that want to moderate the group, not necessarily just people, because there are some people in the group, I'm sure that, that really have no idea about the show. And, and so probably right. better right. to, to say it here. So there you go. And if you're not a member of the group, businessshow.co uh, slash Facebook. So there you go. Perfect. And and we talked about saying no in last week's episode, but this is one of those cases where you should definitely say yes. 
Yes, that's right. We yes, that's right. Don't say no to this, folks. We actually do. you have time, people. Yeah, make sure you have time. That's yes, right. Yeah, 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 yes. yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah, you Just got say it. yes. You got it. Awesome. All right. Well, I want to thank uh, the folks at Smile for sponsoring this episode. I want to thank all of you for listening to this episode. I want to thank you for volunteering to moderate our Facebook group with us. Thanks, Shannon. Good. Hey, thank you, Dave. Have a great week. Thanks. Keep living that charmed life, man. See you next time.